Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time for a foundation face-off. It's all part of my Panning for Gold series here, where I take products from my makeup kit that have similar claims, and I pit them against each other in head-to-head -head comparison to see which ones are the true gold nuggets of my collection. But this quest for gold is high stakes because my aim is to declutter anything that isn't a gold nugget. And it's all part of my overall goal this year, which is to really carefully curate and customize my makeup collection so that it only contains the things that really serve me and my skin type and my coloring best. If you want more information about the project, I will be sure to leave the playlist in the show notes, but you have all the info you need to enjoy this video. And if you like content like this, where it's all about comparing and reviewing makeup and slow beauty, then I hope you'll consider subscribing. I am testing a full face of makeup at any given time, but I come back with individual updates anytime I strike gold, which is why I'm here today, because I have been testing two primers and two foundation palettes, and I have thoughts. So as always, I will leave timestamps in the show notes in case you want to just skip to whatever's most relevant for you. But today I think we're going to start first things first with primers. I had these two primer samples rattling around in my makeup kit, so I thought I would finally get around to testing both of them. The first one is the First Aid Beauty Hello Fab Coconut Skin Smoothie Primering Moisturizer. And I put that against the Too Faced Proactive Nourishing Hangover RX. Um, both of these claim to be moisturizing. Both of them claim to have coconut guts in them. So I thought, what the heck, I'll smear them all over my face. So when I was testing these, I would always put one on one side of my face, one on the other side of my face, and I would wear them at the same time on the same day with the same foundation application under all the same environmental conditions to really see which one worked best. Let's start off with this one from First Aid Beauty. First of all, it is mildly scented. It smells kind of like a uh, scented children's toy, like from the 90s. It's very nostalgic smelling. I did like it, but as I said, the smell is mild and um, it fades almost immediately. So the fragrance wasn't a particularly big deal. The consistency is very nice. It goes on to the, the face very nicely. They say that this is a smoothing priming moisturizer. And in the sense that my face felt smooth, I would say that that's definitely true. But my face didn't look smooth when I used this. This is a very glowy primer. And I'm not necessarily against glowy primers, but I have to be very specific about the type of glow because I have very large pores um, in my T-zone in the center of my face. And this sort of glow really emphasized any of that texture and any of those pores. And it wasn't just when um, I had applied it and I could see the glow. It also shone through any foundation that I used. So this primer is simply not for me. So how does the Hangover RX primer compare? Well, it also has a scent. This one is much stronger, and this one smells like a very sweet coconut smell. I happen to like it, but it is pretty strong, and so I could see how some people might not. Um, it does fade. Um, it's not like I smell like a coconut the whole day, but I do enjoy a brief moment of coconutty goodness, so I did enjoy that. This also feels very nice going on, but I feel like this one soaks into the skin even more. So this didn't make my skin feel as smooth, but it did make it feel moisturized. But I think that's the key word there. My skin felt moisturized. Um, but I didn't necessarily feel like this was a primer. I just kind of felt like it was a moisturizer that worked well under makeup. Um, and so in that sense, I think I'll keep using this until it's gone, just because it is a very nice moisturizer underneath makeup. But specifically as a primer, I didn't feel like it gave my makeup any more longevity. I didn't feel like it made my makeup necessarily look any better. But what I would like to do is compare this to my current favorite primer, which I feel is kind of similar. I also feel almost like it's a moisturizer that just works really well under makeup. But we'll get to what I'm rolling in in a moment. But first, let's talk about the foundations I tested. I pit this RCMA VK11 palette against this Makeup Forever foundation and blush palette. Generally speaking, I tend to prefer liquid foundations over cream formulas, simply because they tend to be easier to use, faster to apply, have a lighter weight on the skin, and I tend to like a very natural look to my skin. 
That being said, sometimes I travel and I have to limit the amount of liquids I take on board with me. And in those cases, palettes like this come in really handy. So something like this definitely has a place in my kit. So let's start off by comparing the insides of the palettes, which of course look very different. This RCMA palette is solely a foundation palette, but of course, because of the shades in here, I can use it for three different purposes, for foundation, for contour, and for bronzing. This one very obviously is for foundation and for blush, but of course, due to the shades in here, I can also use it as a bronzing palette. So I can also use this for three different purposes. So when it comes to the utility, both of them are multi-purpose to the same degree, but both of them, each one leaves out a different key element of my makeup routine. This one leaves out blush, this one leaves out contour. So now that we've talked about how both of these palettes have the same degree of utility, we're now going to ignore the blush half of this palette because I did make a separate video about these blushes where I share all my thoughts. And so I will link that in the show notes in case you'd like to see it. But we're just going to be talking about the foundations for the remainder of the video. These foundations, color-wise, they all lean very yellow. Now, I am pretty much neutral and I lean ever so slightly golden, ever so slightly kind of golden green almost. And so all of these had a much too saturated yellowness to them. So I feel like I could make it work for me, but it was never quite ideal. The second thing in here is that um, the formula isn't that great on my skin, which surprised me because the reason that I actually picked this palette up is because I used to have the uh, stick foundation and I really enjoyed the Makeup Forever HD stick foundation. Um, that was like my go-to whenever I was flying and I just thought this was the same formula. And maybe it is, but it doesn't work for me anymore. I feel like the pores in the center of my face are just really emphasized by this. And no matter what I did, no matter whether I used a brush or my fingers or a sponge, no matter how I applied this, no matter how thin of a layer, I felt like it looked kind of heavy on my skin and it would emphasize any texture I had on my face, whether that was a dry patch or whether it was the pores in the center. So the formula also isn't ideal. However, these three shades I wasn't using as foundation, obviously, but um, I was using them as a cream bronzer. And in that capacity, I felt like they worked really well. Maybe because I just use bronzer on the outskirts of my face where I tend to have less texture. But um, I actually thought that these three shades worked nicely as bronzers. Um, I combined these two shades in the winter. Right now, I'm just using this shade. And I could imagine if I get particularly dark this year, I might combine these two. So um, as a bronzer palette, this actually worked out kind of nicely. The RCMA palette, on the other hand, is a very different formula. This is much more pigmented and it, waxy, I would almost say, but the wax is like once you warm it up in your hands, it's very malleable. And so I feel like a little of this goes a very, very, very long way. And I like that because that means that I can use a very small amount of it and it will create a very sheer veil if I want that. But I can also use a little bit more and I can maybe cover up some more extreme redness that I might be having. However, I have to say this palette isn't perfect because, for example, right now um, I am testing a different product and we'll be talking about that in another video. But um, that product irritated my rosacea. And when that happens, I get a lot of texture in addition to redness on my face. And when I have texture that's that extreme, um, and because it's almost like my skin starts to flake, it's not just like bumps, it's also flakes and, and almost like dryness. And when that happens, then this foundation doesn't work ideally. In that case, only a liquid will really work for me. Um, but I do feel like this is it's just generally better. Like this foundation palette was just kind of a disaster in that case, whereas this foundation palette um, worked better. But when I'm not worried about, you know, a super duper rosacea outbreak, then I feel like this palette actually works really nicely, as long as I don't have like a lot of flakes on my face at the moment. So what's the verdict? Well, this one just doesn't work as a foundation palette for me because the shades are too warm and the consistency just isn't right for my skin type. But 
The blushes are really nice, and I do enjoy using these shades as bronzers. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take the foundation shades in here that I can't use anyway. I'm going to depot those, and instead, I am going to insert some cream, blush, and bronzer products that I have that do work. And then this can be my travel cream bronzer palette. Whereas this one will then remain my soul cream foundation palette. But I'm beginning to think maybe I should replace this. It is getting up there in years. Um, I have used it a lot. It might not seem that way because there's still so much product left, but as I said, a little goes such a long way. Um, but I'm beginning to wonder if the reason that I'm having trouble with the flakiness today and this is because this is getting older, because I don't remember having that problem in the past. So maybe it's time that uh, this one get renewed. So the question now becomes, what am I rolling in? Well, when it came to the primers, quick recap, this First Aid Beauty one is just being decluttered because it simply does not work for my skin type. And this one feels like a moisturizer that works really well under primer, like my current only other primer, this Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. And so I'm just going to pit these two against each other because these both honestly feel like just moisturizing products that work well under makeup. So we'll see in head-to-head -head comparison which one's better. When it comes to foundation, I don't have any more cream formulas to test, so we're going to be moving on to liquids. And since we're moving into summer in this hemisphere and my skin is getting oilier and juicier by the day, I thought it would be the perfect time to try out some of my more matte formulas. So I will be pitting this Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless foundation against this Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place makeup. Um, so if you'd like to see what the end result of this test is, then make sure you're subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up to see more content like this. But also, I'd be interested to hear your predictions, which one of these things you think will work better. But, you know, even if you don't say hi in the comments, I hope you have a great week and that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style.